Okay, question numbers 8 and 9 from the test 3 review for Math 1105 both involve the concept of completing the square, solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. So let's look at question number 8. I'm going to put them both on this video since they both uh, are basically the same problem, the, the same uh, concept in working with both problems. So come with me to my paper. All right. Here we go. Let me get the camera positioned. All right. So question number eight. X squared plus 4X is equal to 1. And what I want to do is I want to solve this by completing the square. Now in order to complete the square, what we have to do is we have to make sure that the X's are on the same side and the constants are on the other. So that's, cor that's done. We also have to make sure that the leading coefficient is 1, which it is. Now, in order to come up with that magic number that completes the square, the way we do that is we look at the coefficient of the x term, which is really the b value. We look at the coefficient of the x term. Come over here with me. We take 4, we divide it by 2, and we square it. That becomes 2 squared which is 4. That's how you complete the square. Once the leading coefficient is 1, you take the coefficient of the x term, divide it by 2, and square that result. Now this number 4 is going to get added to both sides of the equation. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 1 plus 4. The left-hand side of the equation is now a perfect square. In fact, it factors as x plus 2 quantity squared, and this is equal to 5. Now what we do, and this is what the whole point of completing the square leads us to, is we can now apply the square root property, because we have a variable expression squared equals a constant, so when we apply the square root property, on the left-hand side we have x plus 2. You'll notice the squared's gone. And on the right-hand side we have plus or minus, and we take the square root of the constant. And to finish this, remember we're solving for x, we need to subtract 2 from both sides. So x is equal to a negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. So there are, there are actually two answers to this equation, a negative 2 plus the square root of 5 and a negative 2 minus the square root of 5. And we're done. Now let's do the same process again down here. Okay. We're solving this by completing the square. We have to make sure the leading coefficient is 1, which it is. We need to move the 11 out of the way. We need to have the x's by themselves. So we're going to subtract 11 from both sides. x squared minus 8x is equal to a negative 11. And now to determine how the, the number that we need to complete the square, we take the coefficient of the x term, come off to the side with me, we take the negative 8, we divide it by 2, and we square that quantity negative 4 quantity squared becomes 16. And 16 here is the magic number that we use to add to both sides of this equation. So we have x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to negative 11 plus 16. The left-hand side is now a perfect square, which is the whole idea. This is why this is called completing the square. And it factors as x minus 4 quantity squared equals, when we combine like terms, we have the number 5. And now the whole reason for completing the square is to, to get it to a problem in, in the form of a problem where we can apply the square root property. When I apply the square root property, the left-hand side becomes x minus 4. There's no more squared. And the right-hand side, we have plus or minus the square root 
of the constant. And again, remember, just like in the last problem, our goal was to get x alone. So in this problem, we're going to accomplish that by adding 4. x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 5. And again, there are two answers to this problem, 4 plus the square root of 5 and 4 minus the square root of 5. Something I want you to notice on both problems. Notice up here when I subtracted the 2, I put the negative 2 in front and the plus or minus the square root of 5 in the back. I did the same down here. In general, it looks a lot better in your answers when there's a radical that's going to remain that the radical goes in the back rather than in the front. So that's the reason I did that. Okay, that's the process of completing the square.